as Sid rightly mentioned, and this, this workshop is an opportunity for us as UNFPA to really ensure that our colleagues on the ground, on the front line, have the tools that they need and that we as an organization are really positioned to do what we need to do with regard to um, addressing gender-based violence and emergency. Now, um, all of you as representatives from donor countries have been great supporters of UNFPA in our development um, work. And in my um, travels, I just recently came from Sweden, um, UNFPA is largely known as a development agency. But what we want to put forward to you today is that we are also a key humanitarian actor. Um, it's no doubt the world has become um, increasingly humanitarian. Um, in the past decade or so, the number of natural disasters that we deal with has increased um, threefold. And we don't see this trend reducing. We have several concurrent mega disasters. We have disasters that are of various nature, from mega natural disasters, protracted crises, conflict, and now we're also challenged with a biological disaster with regard to Ebola. Not just natural disasters, um, also um, conflicts. It, the world has become increasingly fragile, and what we find is that in 11 of the least stable countries, we have 140 million women and girls of reproductive age. We have almost 17 million pregnant women. And therefore, as UNFPA, with our key mandate area, we must reach these people, um, particularly these women and girls, in these settings. We have to be able um, to do that. So in summary, just looking at what UNFPA has done um, this past year, and you know, we're, we're particularly proud of the fact that in, across a range of humanitarian settings, and of course the big ones, including South Sudan, Iraq, Syria, um, as well as CAR, we've reached over one million people with um, community awareness, social mobilization um, on, on these issues. More importantly, we've also provided um, services, reproductive health, gender-based violence, safe delivery, counseling, the psychosocial care that Sid spoke about, and we have, you know, um, almost 150,000 beneficiaries in this regard. Another key role UNFPA plays is we are the um, number one provider of emergency reproductive health kits, which are basically the commodities, the equipment and supplies that are needed, not just for UNFPA, also for our partners, but also for any organization that is providing these services in these settings. UNFPA is the provider of these kits, and we have a significant um, offer, Emma, a significant role with regard to procurement and logistics in this regard that's run out of our office based in Copenhagen. And then um, another key role for UNFPA is capacity building, particularly of healthcare workers um, in, these, in these settings. So, I mean, this is a, a global snapshot of, uh, of what UNFPA has done uh, this year. And just to say, I mean, certainly for me and, you know, on behalf of all of my colleagues, there, there's no way to emphasize how important these services are. Women do not stop being pregnant. Women do not stop menstruating. Women do not stop needing these services because a disaster has happened. And yet, when disasters happen, what typically happens is the first thought goes to food, shelter, water, et cetera, which are all important, but no less important is a woman's right to be able to deliver safely. And that is what UNFPA is there um, to ensure during emergencies. And we may not be the best agency in terms of how we communicate this, so this opportunity to um, to speak to you today and share this with you is one we um, greatly uh, appreciate and we want to do much more at how we communicate but what's most important to us is solid programs on the ground reaching these 
um, particularly reaching women and girls, and oftentimes men and boys, um, uh, reaching them with, this, uh, with these services that are so important and often not prioritized when um, an emergency hits. And in fact, what I have found in my recent discussions with member states as well as donors is that until you raise this to them, they don't immediately remember that this also is a priority um, during emergencies. And what UNFPA is putting to you today is that not only is it a priority, but that this represents a group on an issue that is often the most marginalized, the least prioritized, and often the hardest to have to um, respond to. Some of the mega emergencies so just looking at what um, UNFPA has done. So with regard to the Syria response, we've reached over 5.6 million um, um, women and girls, as well as men and boys, with a range of reproductive health um, services. I think something um, very innovative that I want to highlight that we've done in Syria, and you can see at the bottom here, 160,000 vouchers, is um, we have a voucher system for reproductive health services that has enabled, of course, women to receive the services they need, but has also kept health facilities running in Syria, which is an extremely difficult, um, an extremely difficult setting. We all know that. But through UNFPA support, these um, uh, clinics and services are still, are still up and running. And we have um, some colleagues here. I could see them before. Okay, there they are. Um, uh, from Syria, raise your hands. Working on the Syria response that um, hopefully you'll be able to um, speak to later that can give more details on this. And then uh, in addition to Syria, um, this is a photograph of a woman who delivered twins in the Zatri camp. UNFPA is especially proud of the fact that um, for the four years of the emergency, um, the Syria crisis, um, through our support um, for safe motherhood, we have not lost a single mother or girl um, through pregnancy or childbirth in this in Zatri camp um, due to the, the great work of UNFPA colleagues and partners on the ground. And this was a recent, I think this picture must be about three weeks old, um, a woman who, and Jennifer's nodding, so I got it right. Um, so now this is um, Iraq, uh, again, another mega uh, emergency. But I mean, as you can see from the numbers, UNFPA is very active on the ground, um, ensuring that we're addressing um, gender-based violence, assuring that women and girls um, are protected and have the support um, that is, is, is needed. And we can see um, in, in Domi's camp in um, in Kurdistan, um, we're supporting, I mean, we're having five babies born daily at the uh, emergency obstetric care. So point being that even with displacement, even as a refugee, women are still able to access the emergency um, life-saving services that they need. Um, moving on to Ebola. And this is not the best picture because these are all men. But um, this was the, the session for men. And UNFPA is uh, involved in contact tracing, um, basically to identify and isolate cases of Ebola in three, in the three, well, actually now four countries. Um, and this is just a picture of the, um, uh, the contact tracers. The, the one key point to make about Ebola is that, yes, all of the efforts around isolation and treatment are really important, but stopping Ebola is going to be due to behavior change. And for that, community mobilization is so important. And basically, our contact tracers are foot soldiers in communities going door to door. Yes, following up on contacts, but also um, providing the really important prevention messages um, on Ebola. And where there has been a reduction in um, new infections, that has really been due to um, the effectiveness of community mobilization and um, communities adopting um, behaviors that enable them to be protected from Ebola. Um, a very busy slide, 
uh, lots of numbers, but uh, I think the most important thing to say is uh, with this is that UNFPA is an, a, a very active player um, in Ebola. We are not only supporting contact tracing, but we're also supporting um, safe deliveries. The health system has collapsed. And I think, I mean, the, 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 what gives me sleepless nights of, often when I think of Ebola is being a pregnant woman in the context of Ebola. Fatality rates for Ebola are around 70%. If you're a pregnant woman, it's 95%. The number one cause of death in, in pregnancy or during childbirth for a woman is bleeding. With, and you present with bleeding and a fever. You go to a, a, a healthcare facility in a Ebola-affected country, bleeding and with a fever, they're going to think you have Ebola. They're not going to touch you. And yet you're just a woman with a complication um, uh, uh, during, during pregnancy. So it's a, it's a very critical role that UNFPA is playing. And um, South Sudan, we have colleagues from South Sudan here. Um, again, just to show safe birth even in the situation that the South Sudanese um, are facing um, in crisis. Um, similar uh, numbers for South Sudan, we've reached two million, I think the most important thing, we've reached almost three million people. Um, similar case for uh, Central African Republic. Um, and this one I'm particularly proud of in the Philippines. I used to be the UNFPA representative in the Philippines. Not that I'm not proud of all the others, I'm equally <laughs> proud. Um, but this is our uh, young people and UNFPA very strong approach on involving young people, not just as beneficiaries of our, of our services, but also involving them in, in their response. So these are young people delivering um, hygiene and dignity kits um, after the uh, uh, Typhoon Haiyan last year. And again, more numbers on the Haiyan uh, response. So just to say that UNFPA is actively involved in all of the major um, ongoing emergencies, as well as in several other countries where there are ongoing crises, of course not at the same scale of these, uh, of these mega, mega disasters. And you know, just to say thank you for your attention, thank you for coming here, thank you for the support that you give to UNFPA, Thank you for the support that you hopefully will continue to give to UNFPA. And hopefully, um, thank you also for recognizing um, UNFPA as a key player um, in emergencies. Not the biggest player, but a key player, specific mandate, um, very important target population that we are supporting. And just a plea to imagine that you are a pregnant woman, a pregnant young woman in any of these situations, what would life be like without an agency such as UNFPA? Thank you very much.